know, it's always a challenge here when you're on the front lines fighting for freedom in the info war. You got to take time to take care of your own preparedness. And that's the same message for all of you out there, too. Make sure that even as you're listening to this and gaining the knowledge and learning what's happening, make sure you turn that into real action. So get yourself squared away with your stored food. Get yourself defensively positioned. Get yourself uh, with, with, with your emergency medicine so that you can be safe and your family can be safe and your community can be safe no matter what comes down the road. That's a very important principle. Now, moving on, we have a guest here with us today, Dr. Peter DeVette, who is the author of a book called Heal Thyself. And he's got a lot of revolutionary information. We're going to go into several topics with him here in a long segment here. Dr. DeVette, thank you for joining me in studio today. Good to have you here. Thank you so much, Mike. It's a privilege to be here. Now, you, uh, you're you a Texan. You, your practice, your wellness center is based in Tyler. Uh, you're a graduate of UT. Uh, you're, you've been, you've been in, in and around Texas for a long time. Well, actually, a uh, little bit further south uh, than Texas. I actually originate from South Africa. Uh -huh. Came to the States in uh, 89, <clears throat> actually 87, uh, to study alternative medicine. And so I uh, made my home here. Came to Texas and did my postgraduate studies at UT Health Center in Tyler, and then got on this track to uh, to practice holistic medicine. So, uh, at the University of Texas, I started a department called the Center for Nutrition and Preventive Medicine. How did they like that? Did they like uh, nutrition there? They they liked the idea, but then when it came to practice, you know, <clears throat> it it kind of faded. You know, the bureaucracy just could not handle. Uh, the incorporation, you know, of education into into patient care. You well, know, there's the there's just so much into drugs and surgery and that that whole mindset. They just couldn't handle it. Well, it's just yeah, it's, you know, they have a vested interest in disease management. So, right. you know, we uh, I I often tell my patients we don't have a health care system. We have a disease management system. So I want to ask you about that. But first, what about the story we just covered in the last segment? This this poor girl, Stacy died after getting nine vaccines in one day. Uh, these are the vaccines that she got. They just kept injecting her, pumping her full of chemicals until she died. I mean, wh what's your take on vaccines? Well, you know, my, my wife runs a foundation called the Assist Autism Foundation, and we take care of a lot of these uh, autistic patients, and, and every single one of them, I mean, w without fail, uh, there's a story there that these kids... Uh, virtually every one of them, I'm not trying to uh, <clears throat> generalize, but uh, these kids are normal, and then all of a sudden they get the 18-month vaccine or they get their, you know, six-month vaccine or eight-month vaccine, and the kid changes right. time and time again, you know. And to take a, a premature infant and load them up with nine vaccines, you know, with, with the preservatives that are in there, and, you know, it's just... You know, the chemical adjuvants. Absolutely egregious. Well, and then they say she died from meningitis. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they already have to blame if you, something if you, else. If you pump <clears throat> enough toxin into the system, then, you know, uh, then you're going to eventually weaken the defense mechanisms and you're going to die of something else. And they can say, yep, you know, <clears throat> kid died of meningitis or, well, you know, gastroenteritis, whatever. Isn't that also true with cancer and chemotherapy? When someone dies from the chemo poison, they always say they died from cancer. Well, uh, I mean, they don't say that you died from the chemo. Your kidney failed. Right. Exactly. Your liver failed. Your brain got <laughs> melted into a mound of goo and, you know, chemo brain. Now you're dead. And they say, oh, I died from cancer. And sometimes they don't even say that. They say you died from an infection because they blew out your immune system. <laughs> right. And then you, right. uh, you got the meningitis or you got, you know, some other disease, you know. So it's amazing how, you know, we have the wool of pulled over our eyes, you know, on medical issues in this country. Well, now, to combat that, you have your book, Heal Thyself, and also, uh, what is your website, by the way, where people can get more information if they're interested? It's uh, qhiwellness.com, and Q QHI stands for Quantum Healing Institute, so it's qhiwellness.com. Okay, qhiwellness.com, and what I like about your book and why I asked you to be here, this is the first time we've ever met, actually, um, and first time you've been on the Alex Jones Show, but... I like the fact that in your book you address the failure of the allopathic approach to medicine. I mean, it's not that it's useless. It has, it has its uses in acute emergencies and so on. But you talk about how we need to stop just treating the symptoms. 
and get into the causes of health and the causes of disease that we can avert. Can you talk about that? Yeah, in my book, there's a chapter called The Five Levels of Healing. You know, and I was inspired by one of my mentors, uh, Dr. Dietrich Klingart, you know, on, on this particular subject. But, you know, he framed it uh, in a way that if you want to heal a disease, you have to get to the source of it. And the source is very seldom physical, although in, on the physical realm, we have a lot of cofactors. And we see uh, more and more added every day with uh, GMOs and toxicities and aluminum chemtrails and, you know, it's coming up and right. uh, the likes. I mean, so, <clears throat> so we're doing a lot of things on the physical level. We have all these super organisms that we're creating because of too much antibiotic use. So all of that is relevant on the physical level, you know, but uh, conventional medicine plays out simply at uh, just at one level, uh, the physical level. Now, <clears throat> you know, if we want to uh, actually track the source of illness, we have to go a little bit higher. So we need to look at the energy body. You know, we're being inundated with all kinds of pollutants, not just physical pollutants, but electronic like pollutants. Like EMFs, you're EMFs, talking about yeah. cell phone towers, Wi-Fi. Now, uh, the, the two worst m ones. Mystery. <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> the two worst ones, Wi-Fi and, um, and cordless phones. I mean, cordless two, phones. two simple things yeah. that everybody has in their homes these days. And if you, work, you know, if you live in an apartment, you have 10 of them around you, <laughs> radiating you. You know, so it's no wonder that autism rates skyrocket when you go into, you know, some of these subdivisions where you have apartments and stuff like that. Hey, isn't there a new, there's a type 3 diabetes is being called now that is caused by electromagnetic uh, contamination or inundation with EMFs. I mean, people, some people's blood sugar goes crazy when they're around uh, Wi-Fi or cell phones. Well, and, and not just that, but uh, palpitations. I mean, I, I've, I, was, I was talking to a physician in Dallas a while back, and he told me his wife died in 2005 from palpitations. She was in her 40s. I said to him, you know, just for interest's sake, do you have Wi-Fi in your house? He said, yep. And I asked him, when, when did you get it? Two weeks before she died. Oh. So it's like, wow, wow, that's interesting. You know, And I hear these stories all the time because I'm in a position where I'm asking about it. You know? But <clears throat> even more important is, is to go deeper because... Uh, in my book, we talk about what's called the mental field or the mental body. So stress plays a huge, uh, you know, role as well in disease creation. So, so every disease, you know, just turns out has a stress program related to it that programs for that specific disease. So that's why some people get, you know, meningitis, other people get uh, sore throats, and other people get cancer of the liver and so forth. You know, so if you want to. Uh, start finding out, figuring out why people develop what they develop based on all these influences, that's where you have to go. And, and by stress, you don't just mean the typical traditional stress like you worked too hard. You're talking about it could be relationship stress. It could be environmental stress, pollutants, you know, a biochemical stress. It could be a stress of, of uh, too, much, too much radiation, you know, from Fukushima fallout. It could be lots of stress. Right, right. Uh, and, and so, uh, but there's mental stress <clears throat> component in virtually every disease uh, creation. So, but the mental stress component uh, co co uh, corresponds with the physical stress as well. So you, you get the toxin, but the toxin doesn't make you sick until uh, emotional conflict comes into play. Uh. <clears throat> the programs for the weakening of that specific organ that then creates uh, the disease. So, right. for instance, if you talk about breast cancer, you know, if you start, uh, you know, listening to stories, but uh, when you talk to women that have developed breast cancer, find out from them what happened just before the breast cancer was diagnosed. What happened in the family, because you'll always find that there was a, a family drama, some kind of a nesting drama, or something related to the nest. Women are nesting uh, beings, uh, men are territorial beings, you know, so, so very definitive uh, emotional stresses that weaken specific parts of the body. And that program for disease on the brain level and also in the body itself. Well, that's a really good point. You know, we, we talk a lot about nutrition. That's one of my favorite subjects. But, of course, we have to recognize the three levels of, of existence. You know, the, the body, the mind, the spirit. And all of those three are so crucial for having health. What One of the things that drives me a little crazy is when people talk about they're just going to fix their mind, they're going to meditate, they're going to chant, but they're still going to eat cheeseburgers. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, don't you have to address all three levels? You can't leave out the nutritional aspect, even if you're addressing mental and spiritual. Well, there's a pairing between our habits and our emotions. So, 
For instance, people tend to self-sabotage much more readily when they're stressed than when they're really, you know, at a, 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 a good emotional level. So it doesn't help to scare people about, you know, you shouldn't eat this and that because then you're depriving them. And deprivation has never worked uh, in human history. People can deprive for a limited period of time, but then they fail, they fall off the wagon. So what you have to do is figure out what the conflict, the emotional conflict is that programs them to, to want to, you know, be addicted to certain foods, you know, and certain chemicals and certain uh, ways of, you know, even certain ignorance patterns. So you would help a patient get into their, their history to understand, like, am I wrong in saying maybe something happened in your childhood that made you addicted to cheeseburgers? I mean, for example, maybe your parents got divorced and then your dad thanked you for seeing him by giving you cheeseburgers. And then you, you're, you're mentally tuned in. Cheeseburgers means love. You're brilliant. Is that exactly, what you're saying? Exactly. exactly ah. uh, the, the situation. I mean, you know, there's always a, a hidden root. So why is it that, you know, uh, our kids are growing up totally addicted to, you know, to fast food? And, and when you try to change their habits... You know, they go through severe stress trying to make that change, and usually the parents fail at it because, you know, the kid has been indoctrinated uh, because of the stress patterns that have linked up to, to their habits. In my book, there's a chapter called uh, Healing Through Recall. You know, so it takes a lot of common diseases, and it uh, breaks it down to the common conflicts that underlie the specific diseases and what has to be done to clear those diseases. So you, work, you do the work on the physical level. You do the work on the energetic level to clean things up. Uh, you know, detox, and then you also have to work at the mental, and even at the genealogical level four is genealogy. Ah, interesting. Uh, the, f <clears throat> the field of epi uh, epigenetics. Why not just take a bunch of amphetamine prescription drugs to deal with your mental issues? Come on, Doc, <laughs> give me some. Uh... I don't, uh, what's the Prozac? Give me some Risperdal. Give me you know, whatever. Well, that's what conventional medicine I mean, does. If they can't explain your illness, they just put you on you know some Prozac because but, you'll feel better. Doesn't that it. drive your trauma deeper into your tissues exactly. and deeper into I mean, your body? Because you're negating. Uh, that's that's what painkillers do. Not only do they af uh, affect you on the physical level, antidepressants affect you on the physical level, but they make it impossible to deal with the emotions uh -huh. uh, that are attached. As a matter of fact. Uh, it you know there's a there's an enhancing effect uh, <clears throat> you know, of disease patterns you know so uh, for instance you know with uh, with uh, narcotics you know you're dumbing numbing down uh, the emotions yeah. uh, so that people cannot you know gain insight and I think that's that's part of the conspiracy here is you know is to dumb us down with all the aluminum that's raining down on us and sure. <laughs> all the mercury we're getting in well hey you know mouths and you know, you know nar narcotic prescriptions sorry to interrupt but um I guess I'm getting that habit from Alex. <laughs> I'm but I'm trying to keep the pacing going here. But, you know, prescription drugs, are, there are more addictions to prescription narcotics than there are illegal narcotics. I mean, it's prescription drugs that are the addiction problem. We're fighting a war against drugs. But have you noticed when we fight wars against anything, we fail? I mean, we're constantly fighting, you know, we're fighting yeah, war on war drugs. Cancer. Look at what's happened. Yeah. You know, since uh, <clears throat> Richard Nixon declared the war on cancer, we have... Ten times more cancer. We have more people dying from cancer. Right. So, you know, instead, figure out what 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 it means. What what uh, the purpose of the disease is. You know, because there's always a biological meaning and purpose to every illness. You understand that, then you can you know unravel it from you know from from the root up. Now, for those for those listening or watching the show, I think there's there's a very powerful message in here from Doctor Devet to parents out there. I mean, wouldn't you agree that parents, you've got to be careful what you reward your children with, if you reward them with food or if you punish them with a lack of food or something. I mean, you are setting control patterns or programs in their brains that could play out, you know, for the whole lifetime. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you, you know, and it's, it's, it's not just what, what we feed our kids when they're stressed. Uh, you know, it's also, you know, there's specific link, links also between um, you know, specific uh, emotional stressors and, and certain foods. You know, if there's a, um, a separation from father, for example, at some point or, you know, some kind of a abandonment from father, we see more uh, problems with wheat, so celiac disease and so forth, you know, <clears throat> during, er, during early childhood. And so, you know, so every food has a biological meaning too. But, you know, conventional physicians and so-called skeptics who, by the way, don't even believe in the existence of consciousness. They don't even believe in the existence of a spirit or a free will. 
they would say that what you're saying is nonsense, that there's no energetic quality to foods. It's just vitamins and minerals and dead fiber and proteins, and that's it.